Today we will talk about user inputs in Java. Previously we discussed how to store values into variables of different types. Uh, but today we will look at how we can read these values from users from a user instead of giving them directly in our program. So let's begin. First of all, uh, you need to know what a user input is. User input is like uh, reading value from the user during the runtime. So that's how you can define it. So to use uh, functions for getting user input, we need a scanner class. Scanner class is like a huge Java class which has all built-in functions for reading different type of inputs. So with this class, input of each data type can be read. So it you by using this class, you can read a string from the user or you can read a character, an integer, a decimal value, anything, any data type. So uh, that's also what you need to know. So while calling the function, you will be storing the output input in a variable. So each uh, input will be stored in a specific variable. You will specify that variable yourself. We will see more about this in the code section of this video. So as I said before, scanner class must be imported and inputs are taken at runtime. So that's the whole purpose of inputs that we don't want to define our values into the program. We want the user to enter these values. So this is one of the most widely used features on, in programming. So uh, make sure to understand it well. So these are all the functions through which you can you can uh, read different values you need to memorize all these so you will be using all these functions for example if you want to read uh, an integer from the user you will be using the function next int so let's see the code section of this uh, presentation so we can get more of an idea of what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and begin. So firstly, as I said before, you can't use the scanner class directly. First of all, you must import the scanner class into your program. Some classes are imported by default. For example, string class is imported by default. So you don't need to explicitly import it but uh, there are uh, hundreds even thousands of functions which are defined in, in different types of classes and you must import those classes or packages uh, before using them so we import our classes at top of the program before any classes so let's um, to import scanner class or any class what you want to do is write the import keyword it's a keyword key, keyword used for importing classes so what you want to do next is java dot as you can see that java is a package it has multiple packages all these are packages defined in java a package is a group of classes relevant classes so dot util now util class has all these packages defined into it all these classes defined into it so what we want to do is we need the scanner class so so now we have imported uh, the scanner class into our function so scanner class is found in util package which is in the into the java package so right now you are seeing this yellow warning type thing so just ignore it uh, as you can see it is telling it, us that it is never used so so we will see what you have to do about this so first of all to use any class any class in any programming language you must create an object of it 
so what we are gonna do is we are gonna create an object of this class so every time you want to create an object of a specific class first you write the class name for example here we are dealing with scanner so i will write scanner then you will write the object name or you can think of it as a variable so i'm gonna call it input what you want to do is next is inter equal and then new this new keyword is very important um, it's like telling our compiler to create a new object of this particular class then you what i want to do is write the class name again this these this thing this thing and this thing all these are same for every class so now you have to put parentheses so into the parentheses you need to give it a parameter a parameter is required so what we need right now is system dot in as you can see it has multiple parameters so now we are linking linking our program with the keyboard so you can think of this as linking of keyboard like user input like keyboard you can think of it as linking of keyboard with our object right here okay so we need uh, some variables into which we will be storing user input so let's declare some variables like int num so now num will be able to be able to store all integer values previously what we did was give it a value explicitly like this like now num variable is holding 74 into it so what we will do right now is instead of giving it value we will first display a message to the user so that our user will understand what to do and it will have some guidance guidance so what you we are going to print a simple message system dot out print you already know this uh, please enter a number so now we are given we have given our user a simple message that is telling him to enter a number so i am uh, you might have noticed that i am using the print function because i don't want the input to go onto the next line you can use print ln to it's perfectly fine it's perfectly okay to use print ln but i am not using it for now i will show you about this in a moment so for now you need to know that you can use any function so now you have to create uh, now you have to you have displayed the message now you need to create call the object to store the value into this variable uh, into this variable we need to store a value into this variable so we need to call the function so what you have to do is uh, use your variable name first so our input will get stored into this variable and you have to assign it input first you write object name that you have created earlier then you use dot then you as you can see it has all those functions that we saw earlier next int next byte next short next line it has all those uh, next to but for now we, we are reading an integer value so we are gonna use next int like this so now it is telling our compiler to read uh, an integer from the keyboard and store it into num so let's try running the program so i have ran it as you can see it is now telling me to enter a number so let's enter 74 and 74 is stored into our uh, num variable so let's uh, try printing that value let's try printing this variable so as you can see i am printing num here so let's run it again 
and enter any value like 41 as you can see 41 is getting printed here as it was stored into this variable so this value will be stored into this variable till it is modified or destroyed so uh, that's how you read integers um, also make sure to use the correct data type here for example our variable is an integer type so you can only use int here or int here for example we can't use double next double now it's giving us error since our variable is an integer type and we are trying to read a double value so if you want to read a w, double value either create a new new variable let's uh, create a new variable or change the data type to uh, double instead of in let's create num1 now what you want to do is change the variable name to so let's run it uh, uh, we have to print this one here so we know that it works let's uh, try again 71 as you can see it's giving 71.0 since it's a double value you can also enter something like this like 4.2221 so as you can see it is getting printed like it was stored so you can take multiple inputs also let me let's let's read one double value and one integer value from the user let's do that uh, right now so so now i'm reading num1 and let's display these numbers in separate lines sorry i have to write num here so let's run it so first it's asking me you know what let's change this message let's change this to decimal so we know what we are entering so make sure to use appropriate messages so user knows what he has to enter so as you can see now it is telling to enter a, a decimal value so we are going to enter a decimal value 4.2 now it is telling us to integer enter an integer value so we are going to enter 7 so as you can see both values are getting printed here as they are stored in their respective variable double input was stored into this variable and integer was stored into this variable so that's how you take user inputs uh, i also want to show you one thing that if you use println instead of print uh, i want to show you the difference so let's see here as you can see it is now prompting the input on the next line it works the same way but uh, it's a little different so it's up to your preference on how you want to handle this so it will also work the same way so this is also done also you can't enter the incorrect value for example if i try to enter a string instead of a decimal or an integer for example like this as you can see i'm getting error exception we will learn more about these later so make sure to enter the correct value or you can apply checks we will see all about that later so let's try reading a string and a character so string string s1 let's create a string called s1 now let's display a message enter your string okay so let's uh, similarly use the variable variable first uh, that is s1 then assign it value next uh, sorry input input dot next line so now it will read an entire line from the user let's also display it so we know what we are entering so let's try now 
Uh, now it is uh, prompting for a string. Let's enter. This is Java. As you can see, this our string was stored into S1, and now it is uh, printing this value, uh, that string that was stored into S1 here. So as you can see also there is another function called next it also takes string value let me show you the difference so let's run it again now we are using next instead of next line so let's enter again this is java so as you can see this is getting printed so what the next function does it only reads till an empty space if it um, if, an, if an empty space is, it is found it terminates uh, one last thing i want to show you is to read characters a single character char ch let's create a uh, char data type ch as you know char is used to store a single variable like uh, this uh, single character sorry like this a or g or 3 all these are char char values so let's uh, enter uh, sorry Let's practice uh, how to read characters, a single character. So let's just play enter a character. Now you have to change uh, this to uh, ch. And you have to write dot char at zero. Now let's try printing this. So now what it will do, it will only take our single character, the first character we enter. So let's try running it. Let's enter E, W, sorry. Now as you can see, W is getting printed here. So it's a single character getting printed here. So a single character is stored into CH. So that's it for today's video. We will talk more about uh, more content in the next video. Uh, thank you.